The process of buying a new car, and by that I mean either a brand new one complete with new car smell and massive sticker shock, or in fact a new to you car that's been previously loved by another owner, can leave you with a flood of different emotions. It can be exciting, it can be stressful, and if you're in the market because your previous car is getting retired due to either a breakdown or an unfortunate collision, it can be bittersweet. And while there are plenty of great videos and resources available online that can help you through the process of getting behind the wheel of your new EV, and we've made many here on this channel, we realised during a recent team chat that there aren't that many resources designed to help you get to know your new EV after you've handed over your hard-earned money or signed a lengthy financial agreement in lieu of fat wads of cash. So with that in mind, we decided it was time to change all of that. So here's our list of things you should do when you get a new electric vehicle to get to know it better. Because this video would be really long if we didn't, I'm going to make some basic assumptions about where you are in your buying process. I'm going to assume that you've already done some research into your needs, figured out a budget you can afford, and taken some kind of test drive to figure out which vehicle is best for you. I'm also going to assume you've actually taken ownership of the vehicle and Wah! where did you come from? I've been out of the basement for a long time now, Nikki. Oh, okay. I think you should do the ad. The ad? You know, the ad. The ad. Oh, the ad, yeah. So we need to throw in a little reminder that if you're in the market for a new electric vehicle and you'd like our personal help buying it, we here at the channel offer a bespoke consulting service for both individuals and fleet operators designed to help you identify your EV buying requirements, build a short list of vehicles you should buy, and then help you through the process of buying and the first few weeks of ownership. For individuals, you get three one-hour sessions with both myself and Kate. Or if you're a business, we'll tell a solution to fit your needs. So follow the link in the down below if you'd like more information. So you have a car. Congratulations. I'm guessing that unless you were pretty lucky, you probably didn't get a whole lot of hand holding from the dealership or showroom you purchased from. Or in fact, if you're buying used from the previous owner. After money exchanged hands and after keys were handed over, I'm guessing you were pretty much on your own. And maybe, if you were lucky, you were given a chance to set up telematics and app sign-ins. And maybe you were given a full charge too. Dealerships love joking that they've just given you a full tank of gas. But honestly, I've also heard of some horror stories about cars being handed over without a full charge. So don't take that as a given. That first drive home from the purchase is hopefully a pretty short one. And if it's not, it actually never hurts to find a quiet place to pull over and familiarise yourself with your new car before driving any length of distance. Unlike gasoline vehicles, which pretty much have one or two different gear shifter arrangements, EVs can have a plethora of different buttons and controls to master. Some use traditional automatic style gear shifters, others use on steering column controls, and some even just require you to drag your finger on the touchscreen in a particular direction to get the car to go where you want it. And while you're figuring out how to put the car into drive and into reverse, of course also figure out how to put it into park. Some cars will automatically engage a parking mode if you open the door while the car is still in drive mode, but figuring out all of that ahead of time helps you to avoid embarrassment. It will also help you to avoid unintended collisions caused by the car still being in gear when you think it isn't. Because EVs don't make a whole lot of noise, it's all too easy to not realise you're in gear when you are, so it makes sense to get into the good practice of training your brain exactly how to put your car into and out of park before getting out. The same thing goes for turning the vehicle on and off. 
Well, most EVs on sale today have no physical key you have to put in a lock. They use keyless start stop instead. Some EVs don't even have a power button and will power on or off based on if they can detect a key, if there's someone in the driver's seat and what gear the car is in. Others may automatically turn on when you enter into the cabin, but not actually go into drivable state, which, as it happens, is exactly what the Mercedes-Benz AMG EQE SUV we've had on review this week does. The car, in fact, that we were filming with earlier today. The other really important thing to figure out while you're parked is where the charge port door is and how to open it. Some cars use a really obvious old school charging door that you can literally just press to open. Others have hidden charge port doors that might be hard to spot and usually require the car to either be parked and unlocked before they'll open. They'll require you to press a button on the remote or sometimes select a menu item from the car's internal touchscreen display or smartphone app. Again, this is super important, both because it helps you figure out how you'll need to park at charging stations, but also because you really don't want to be that person at a public fast charger standing there trying to figure out how to open the blinking charge door. Obviously, if you're driving a significant distance back from purchasing your car, you may have no option but to try out a fast charger on your first trip. My sister-in-law had to do that when they travel back a good 300 miles to buy their EV. And if that's something you're going to have to do, again, make sure you've downloaded all the relevant charging station apps you'll need and do spend some time planning your route before you leave. In heavily populated areas like the eastern seaboard and down the US west coast, it's frankly less of a problem to do a long distance trip without planning. But planning builds confidence and beats range anxiety. Among the list of charging apps you're going to need to initiate charging with some EVs, ones with plug and charge at least, I'd also recommend you download some route planner apps, especially a better route planner, chargeway and plug share. All should give you a really good idea of what charging stations are available and what the reliability is like at each. I personally like Chargeway, not only because I know the company founder, but because the app simplifies the charging process by allowing you to see how fast charging is using numbers and colours rather than relying on arbitrary technical terms that, frankly, the majority of people watching this don't understand. You'll also need to figure out where your granny lead or emergency charge cable is if, in fact, your car has one. Again, not all dealerships even know or understand what this is, and because some automakers tend to hide them away in special subfloor compartments, the person who handed you the keys may not even know it exists. It's also equally possible when you're buying used that the car might not even come with one, even if it left the factory with one. Finally, spend some time reading the manual or perusing the on-screen menu system to figure out how the charging timer works. Most modern EVs now have them and they can help you charge your car during off-peak periods. If you're signed up for one of those time of use billing systems at home, it can significantly reduce your electricity costs, but it's also well worth figuring out charge timers because they can be heinously complicated. Some just have a be finished by this time function, while others allow you to tailor your charging based on the desired finished state of charge, how green the electricity grid is at a given time, and even the outside weather. Also, you'll want to check out that the previous owner didn't have the charge timing or geolocation charging set for something weird. That means that having got your new shiny home and plugged in, you go to set off the next time and find out that it hasn't actually charged. We've all had that one here at the channel and it's frustrating and unfortunate. The same thing goes for preconditioning. Preconditioning is one of the most useful and incredible features of modern EVs and basically eliminates the need for you to go outside on a cold winter morning to scrape ice. In the summer, it means that your car will already be cool when you need to head out. And spending time learning how to use that, frankly, that is boss level. Charging out of the way, let's talk about range. 
we regularly talk about range on this channel and reiterate the fact that the majority of people don't ever need to use more than a tiny proportion of their EV's battery pack on a single trip. The majority of people don't even need to regularly fast charge, even those without direct access to off-street charging. But when you're getting a new EV, it's always worth doing at least one range test to see what the car and you are capable of. For range testing, there are no better online range tested than Tom Malogny from State of Charge and Carl Connor from Out of Spec. They regularly do real world range tests and generally model a great way of doing it. Sticking on roads you know well with predetermined places they know they can stop and charge at. Another good range tester is Bjorn Nyland, but sometimes he does tend to throw caution to the wind a little more and honestly, you're not trying to see how far your EV will go under extreme conditions, but rather how far your EV can go using the kind of normal driving style and weather conditions you have where you live. Take a few hours out of your day and plan a route that you know well. Figure out where there are charging stations and take your car out for a regular drive at regular speeds. Note the weather and most importantly, drive as you normally would. Keep an eye on the range as it drops and pay attention to where the nearest charging station is at all times. Don't be a hero and try to go further than the car is comfortable doing and plan to transition from high speed roads to lower speed ones when you hit like the last 10% state of charge. Frankly, I'd advise you don't go much below 5%, at least the first time you try it. And remember that some older EVs are less than generous when they pop on that turtle light that tells you you only have a few miles left. Some, like my Chevrolet Bolt, give you a fair amount of warning and in the right conditions will give you a few miles when they hit an indicated zero miles on the display. And some, like Kate Walton Elliott's OG Soul EV, really mean zero miles when it indicates zero miles. If you're someone who likes to take lots of long distance trips and you live somewhere with questionable public fast charging infrastructure, it can be really useful to know how far your car will travel when it says it's empty. But I should reiterate, most people don't really need to do this step. In fact, most people shouldn't, but if you do need to know it, it's useful and it can avoid you from getting stranded. I cannot stress this enough though. If you're going to figure out the limits of your car's range, do it safely and get someone else to help you with another vehicle, you know, just in case. If you're new to EVs, understanding the impact of weather can be really helpful. So testing out your car's real world range in different weather conditions can really help you plan for a safe trip. And it can also help you manage the expectations you have of your vehicle. Cold weather can zap your car's range and knowing that before you make that cross country trip to visit grandma for the holidays is preferable to being left stranded because prior to this trip, you only ever make the round trip to work and back. Knowing how your car behaves in summer and winter is really also very important as it helps you set your personal expectations and avoids nasty things happening. The next thing on my list is emergency preparedness. While most internal combustion engine vehicles have 12 volt starter batteries that are pretty easy to get to, modern EVs, especially those with frunks, don't always make their 12 volt batteries easy to reach. The 12 volt battery is used to initiate the computer systems when you power your car on, and it's the 12 volt system that engages the main power relays to activate the high voltage battery pack. But if your EV's 12 volt battery pack isn't easily accessible when the power is out, knowing how to get to it to jumpstart your car is kind of important. Some Teslas and the Ford Mustang Mark E have special attachment points that you use to pop the frunk release if the battery is flat. This then allows you to remove any trim pieces covering the battery and proceed as normal. Other EVs like my F-150 Lightning have a hidden manual frunk release that you can use to gain entry to the underhood area. Knowing where this is and how to gain entry to your vehicle before it actually needs you to access it is a real lifesaver and it can help you avoid being stranded at the side of the road. 
Also, when you are buying used, it's important to remember that the 12 volt battery may be nearing the end of its life, particularly if it's a traditional lead acid starter battery affair. Carrying a small jumper pack is often enough to get the car going, or just checking on how old it is and replacing if it's over four or five years is a pretty solid plan. In a similar way, if the battery in your remote control is dead, there are also vehicle specific startup procedures that are designed to help you gain entry to and start your car because not all cars have a traditional backup lock. You need to look in the owner's manual and you'll find a set of instructions so that again, if things don't work as you expect them to, you can save yourself the hassle of looking things up there and then, or in fact, calling a tow truck. Because yeah, while Google is your friend in an emergency, I don't know about you, but my phone always seems to have the worst internet connection at exactly the moment I need it to work. So short circuit the worry and be prepared, look up ahead of time. Along with getting into your vehicle, knowing other things like where the tire sealant kit is and how to use it is really useful in an emergency. Although I should also note that I'm someone who really does not like using those fix a flat systems because they can and do cause damage to your tire and rim if you don't use them properly. Frankly, if your car doesn't have a spare wheel and most EVs don't, it's usually better to just call a tow truck. But if you live somewhere really remote, consider getting a spare wheel. Most EVs made by legacy automakers use exactly the same bolt patterns as internal combustion engine vehicles from the same manufacturer. So you should be able to source a spare wheel reasonably easy. And there you have it, a list of things we think you should do to get to know your EV better. Because believe me, it'll save you a lot of heartache if you do, and you can't really take your EV out for dinner to find out exactly what makes it tick. Thanks for joining me today. And if you've got any thoughts, make sure you leave them below in our Discord chat room, or you can reach out to us on Mastodon. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They are some of the more than 1500 people who help fund this channel through Patreon and YouTube, helping us cover our bills, pay our team, and making sure that we can remain 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed below, just follow the links. There are a range of different tiers you can sign up for from as little as $1 a month, or if you pay yearly, just about $10.08 a year. A huge welcome to our newest supporters, Conrad Young, Neon Frog, Siobhan Greeny, Alan Savage, Scotty, Ray Mario, Jennifer, Nesklova, and the Lord of Chaos. Thanks for becoming part of the TE crew. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations. And we even have an old fashioned PO box you can reach us at. The address is also linked below. And if if you're in need of some swag, you'll find our swag store also in the down below. We've got some great content coming up, so make sure you're subscribed on Peertube or YouTube, and we'll see you again soon. We make new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. If you want more, The Mighty Algorithm thinks you'll like this video, but we here also think that this one is well worth a look. See you soon, and as always, keep evolving.